welcome to Witness Rugby Chat. It's episode 28. I'm James Gordon. I'm sorry I've been missing for the past few weeks. It's just been a busy time work-wise uh, and also a few um, hospital appointments with my uh, with my son. So that's uh, eat, eating into my podcast recording time. Um, it's also increasingly difficult to find the time to arrange to get guests in, but I'll I'll look to resolve that in the coming weeks. We might start doing audio only podcasts, but we'll we'll see about that. Before we get started, uh, thanks as always to sponsors Musical All Sorts, Arnold Gore, Arnold Gore's Financial Management, PD Law Solicitors, and Deals the Jewelers. Um, lots to get through in this episode. Uh, I want to talk about a few rumours and murmurings and potential new signing. Um, later on as well um want to have a reflection on the club statement from last week about going part-time we'll talk a bit about 1895 cup and what's going on there um so yeah let's get let's get cracking with it really so uh, i just want to look back at the game against bradford um for those of you who went um it wasn't a pleasant experience it has to be said i mean i'd probably rank it in the top five worst performances that I've probably ever seen from a witness team. Um it was it was it was poor. It was yeah, th- there's not really much more you could say about that. I know there's a bit of context around the situation in terms of, you know, the players were told that they were going part or the club was going part time. Um but I still think to put up the performance that they did was, you know, a little um I wouldn't go as far as saying unacceptable but very disappointing. So sixty two nil. Um, against anyone in any league is is bad enough, but when you're a full time team um, in a in in the championship, you, you shouldn't be getting knocked over by that score by anyone. Um, I just thought witness got really sluggy. I thought there was a couple of a couple of decisions went against witness. It has to be said, but I mean you can't you can't blame the referee for a sixty two and a loss. I thought there was a I thought witness never really recovered. There was a there was a call early on where the Bradford fullback took a catch. Carried it in goal. Witness pinned him probably five metres from his own line. Referee decided it was a twenty metre tap, which was a a bizarre um, decision. Bradford went up and forced a repeat set and then score. But you know that maybe that was just you know, papering over the cracks a little bit thinking about that decision. But yeah, very disappointing from Witness. Of course, young team get that um, get the situation regarding the uncertainty over the future of the club and. And whatnot, but I still think as professional rugby league players, um, you know, you'd expect better than than that. Bradford, I didn't think Bradford had to break sweat in all honesty. I mean, everything went in their favour in terms of they got all the lucky bounces and, and stuff like that. But I didn't even think Bradford were, were that good. I thought they just they just played. They they didn't. You know, I, I would imagine Bradford are capable of playing better than than they did on on that occasion. Um, but you know, away from that, at the end of the day, it's one game, it's two points that, that was lost. I mean, Bradford away is a tough game anyway. I think it's just more the manner of the defeat that was that was concerning. So, um, we just have to get back on the horse this week, so to speak, against Rochdale. Um, just wanted to have a look a little bit at the running of the team. So, um, you're effectively looking at five teams. I mean, we're not sure what's happening with relegation. There's murmurings that the league's going to expand, so there may not be. Um, relegation anyway um, as things stand the bottom two go down Rochdale pretty much done so they'll be going down um, but for the other spot it's it's basically one from five and that includes Witness I don't think there's any chance of Witness being relegated but stranger things have happened and Witness have got a you know, not the easiest of, of runs, it has to be said. Um, so we'll just have a quick run through. Glenn on the uh, Witness Forum posted these, so he saved me doing a little bit of research, which was good. Um, so you got Batley have 12 points, Swinton have 12 points, Witness have 10, Dewsbury have 9 and Barrow have 9 as well. Um, just looking at this, the key point is that Barrow and Dewsbury both have a game in hand. Um I'm just trying to figure out who it's against. They do play each other um, this weekend, so um, one of them's going to win that one. So um, important. Well, it could be a draw, I guess, but important for Witness to to pull off a win this week. Um, Witness is running Rochdale at home this week, then Halifax away, then Toronto at home, Sheffield away, Toulouse at home, 
Lee away, Swinton at home, and then Dewsbury away last game, and you, know, you wouldn't want to go to Dewsbury on the last game of the season needing the result to stay up. Um, looking at witnesses run, you got pretty much three tough away games, Halifax, Sheffield and Lee, all teams, well, Halifax have sort of fallen away a little bit, but certainly Sheffield and Lee are going to be looking to get results to get in the top five. Tough home games in terms of Toronto and Toulouse, the toughest two home games you could get, um, obviously as well as Rochdale and Swinton. You'd like to think that Widnes could knock over Rochdale and Swinton relatively comfortably at home, so um, you'd hope for four points there. Um, and then it's just a case of, can you see Dewsbury or Barrow winning three of their last seven, uh, sorry, nine games? So. Dewsbury have got Barrow at home, Sheffield away, Halifax at home, Rochdale away, Featherston at home, Batley away, Bradford at home, Toulouse away and Widnes at home. Um, you know, you're looking at there, they've got Rochdale in there, um, Dewsbury at Batley, a derby might, might go in their favour, but other than that, you know, Barrow, you're looking at that, you're looking at Dewsbury's running and you're sort of looking at three wins max. Um, from that, which might of course be all all they need, but uh, Featherston at home for them might be one they target. Halifax at home for them might be one that they target as well. Um, Jewsbury, uh, sorry, Barrows running, um, so they've got nine points. Like they've got Jewsbury away this week, then they've got Lee at home, Swinton away, York at home, Bradford at home, Sheffield away, Toronto away, and Batley at home. Um, Barrow had a really good result against Featherston, it has to be said, and that will give them confidence for this running. They'll. Probably look at Swinton away as, as one they could win, um, but you know in terms of home games, Lee Swinton, uh, sorry Lee York and Bradford at home are all tough. They've got Toronto away, which they may just throw anyway because they don't want to gear up. You'd imagine Barrow will go into that last game at home to Batley needing some sort of result to avoid the bottom two. Um, of course, there's potential that Swinton and Batley are going to get dragged into it. I mean, looking at this weekend's fixtures, Batley actually play Swinton. Um, at Swinton this weekend which whoever wins that will probably be safe I'd say or certainly nudging towards safety I mean you're looking at effectively if Widnes win this weekend you're probably going to be looking at Batley or Swinton will have 14 Batley or Swinton and Widnes will have 12 and then Dewsbury or Barrow will have 11 and then Dewsbury or Barrow will have 9 if that makes sense because you've got Batley playing Swinton and Dewsbury playing Barrow Um <sighs> Who knows what, who's going to get sucked in. Batley play, York at home, Lee away, Rochdale away, Dewsbury at home, Toulouse away, Featherston at home and Barrow away. And then Swinton play, Batley at home of course, Bradford away, Barrow at home, Lee away, Featherston away, Halifax at home, Witness away and Sheffield at home. Um, I'd say, oh, I, I think Swinton will knock Batley over this week and I think that probably be just about enough for Swinton. They probably need another one win and you could see them beating Barrow at home. You could see them maybe beating Halifax at home. Um, and even Sheffield at home, they do probably give a good game as well. So, um, lots of twists and turns, I'm sure, ahead for the coming weeks. I don't think Widnes have got anything to worry about. I don't think Widnes will be in that bottom two at all. I still I think Widnes will beat Rochdale this week. I think Widnes will probably beat Halifax away um, and Swinton at home. Um, you just don't want to be... You just don't want to... As long as Widnes can get to the point where they go to Dewsbury at last game and there's no pressure on that game, I think um, I think they'll be relatively happy with that. Um, the 1895 Cup semi-final is Lee away on the 28th of July, 4pm kick-off. A really tough draw. That well, the hardest draw you possibly could have got. Um, I, 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 I've never actually been to Wembley for a Challenge Cup final because I was waiting for Widnes to get there. Um, They've only been there once or I think once in my lifetime, 93. I was only a nipper then, I was only four or five years old, so um, I didn't go to that one, obviously. Um, it would be a bit of a bittersweet moment, it has to be said, if if the, if if my first witness experience at Wembley was an 80-95 Cup final, but it looks like the draw gods have uh, decided that it's not going to be the case anyway. So. Um, I think it would be very tough for Witness to beat Lee at Lee and get a place in the Derek Beaumont Cup final, of course. So, um, but you never know what might happen in a semi-final. Let's just hope it doesn't go as sour as Witness's last Cup semi-final, which, of course, was also played at Lee. Um, so, time to get into some serious stuff now. So, the Witness board 
um, released a statement last week, a, a fair and open and honest statement, um, based on basically the club going part time for next season. Now this has been speculated over a few weeks. I know um, several players were communicated this several weeks ago. Um, told that they could speak to other clubs for next season. Um, there's clearly issues at Witness. It's clearly a lot of problems and. Um, you know, I don't think you know. We don't know. I don't think anybody knows necessarily what's going on. Um, the bottom line is, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. The bottom line is, is that the club doesn't have enough money. It's spending out more money than it's bringing in. I suppose from those of us from the outside, you'd look at it and think, well, if we're averaging four thousand, you're going part time next season. You'll have the season ticket money and the sponsorship money. You know we should be able to put a part-time team together, but that is of course assuming that you can get out of contracts that are in uh, that go into next season. Um, clearly, there's there's issues uh, financially for the club, and um, it's very it, you got you've got to sympathise with the the club for for what's going on. I I, st I still think I mean I think this statement I mean I called for a statement to be issued and it was, but I still think that there's. I still think that maybe there could be a bit more um, not transparency because that makes it sound like they're not being transparent but I still think it, it, it'd be nice to know what exactly is needed to, to sort of smooth over the current um, problem um, so for those of you, I mean you will have seen the statement you know it's on the club website um, talks about the parachute payment with being withheld so without that witness would have been part-time this season um, of course the previous custodians took half the parachute payment money roughly and um, the other half's being withheld by the Super League clubs which to be fair I don't think I mean yeah as witness fans we'll think that as a terrible move but I, I don't think you can blame them necessarily for that the problem is is you effectively got a witness club at the moment that is um, can only really afford to be part time, but it's paying full time wages. So um, the academy funded being withheld is a massive issue as well. Um, you know, and the the board made the point that they've honoured the players' contracts from earlier in the year. They didn't necessarily have to do that. They could have just cut loose the players potentially, and um, you know, do that. The 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 points deduction means central funded next year will be around 250,000 so that's a significant decrease from this season um, I think I don't think part time I'm just seeing if there's anything else worth raising in this statement right now I don't think part time is a terrible um, I've seen some real negative comments about it um, I don't think part time is a terrible move I think if you look at some of the teams that witness have played this season you can put a competitive team part time but look at York um, you know, I don't even think York have got a, a brilliant team on paper, but they're well coached, they're well drilled, they've got a good little setup there, and um, they're doing fairly well. Forget Toronto, the Toronto is, is a complete anomaly. Um, you know, it's a false economy having Toronto in the league. If they go, presumably in London get relegated, you'd have, you'd have a much more balanced league next season of part time. Teams, you might have the odd team like Lee. I think are looking at a hybrid model where they do some training in the daytime, and uh, Bradford operate on a similar basis. I think, um, I think that's probably a better model for the top championship clubs to be, not fully part time but not full time. A bit of a hybrid model where you can have maybe four or five full time players who combine playing with community work and, and whatnot, um, maybe a few more and have some training sessions in the day. Of course, if you've got an academy, the academy players are full time, so. You might have a situation where you've got four or five full-time pros who are training effectively with the academy. Um, that could work, of course. There's a massive strain on the academy at Witness at the moment, and there's the big debate of well, you're looking at what other clubs do. Do you just write off the academy? Um, I don't think you do that, but it's very difficult to put a sound business case towards keeping one at the moment because you know you've had Witness have obviously invested into having an academy you know the time and, and money and, and, and bringing the players through rugby league needs clubs to be bringing players through witness sort of not not being punished as such but certainly almost being given a, 
a short shrift in terms of well even though we I think we're up to 22 23 academy players who've played this season in terms of the being through witnesses systems um, if there was more clubs with a system like witness then rugby league would probably be in a better place so it would be a shame to see that go um, I don't think it will I think witness will stick to it it's just how you it's how you manage that the the pathway really because you want you know you'd imagine if it, if you've got academy players they're going to want to go to a full time environment once they've graduated from the academy if you like and um, you know how how you do that I mean everyone's saying oh are we writing off Super League well no I don't think going part time now doesn't mean you have to be part time forever um, you know the, ultimately the club's got to stabilise itself and there's no reason as you've seen in previous years there's no reason why a part time club couldn't win the championship anyway um, there's no you know this season there's, Lee could still win championship York could still win championship because it goes to the, to the playoffs and I still think can put a competitive team together the contract situation in terms of when players can speak and, and building your team for next season uh, sort of requires you to come out and you know the club need to decide what they're doing next season because they need to recruit basically they need to tell the players that they've got what's going on um, you know and that's ultimately what's happened I think there's a few issues Kieran Pirtle's out of contract at the end of the season I think the club need to decide are they going to offer him a new deal he might not want to stay you know he's been through the ringer a little bit under undue pressure this year he's been getting criticism which I think is completely unfair um, they've got to decide if he's going to be the coach if not got to find another coach um, recruitment recruitment wise of course there's players who are on deals for next season and just because the club's announced that they're going part time doesn't mean that those deals become null and void the club would still have responsibility, legal responsibilities over that so they've got to try and offload um somehow those contracts so um you know anthony gellin's obviously the obvious one um he could dig his heels in and say well i've got a contract for next year i'm stopping um and that obviously puts uh, witness in a little bit of an awkward situation i think there's only about i think there's nine or ten players that are on contract so um it'd be interesting to see how that all pans out clearly there's a lot of um there's a lot of to and froing that will be going on behind the scenes at the moment. Um, I understand that a handful of players at least are in talks with other clubs about moving on immediately. Um, so that is for the rest of this season. I'm not sure who those players are. I know Harrison Hansen's being linked with Salford, but I, I can't see that. I think if Hansen's going to leave, it will be to Lee. Um, and I think that will be next season. But... Um, Clearly, the club needs to get players off the wage bill. What happens beyond that, I'm not too sure because, of course, it, it feels barely like it basically feels like the only play, the players playing are effectively the only 17 that are fit. I mean, if you look at, look at the team at Bradford, you you know you look at the players that were missing who were injured. Apart from the the 19 man squad, it, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to think of any more players that could possibly play um, in the first team. So. Um, you know, you've got eight, nine games left, very tough situation at the moment for Witness where you're probably looking like you need to move four or five players on to get them off the wage bill, but then you've got no, you can't bring any more players in. Um, a blow to that is obviously Gellin's the one, he's taken up a huge amount of money, but he's now got hamstring injury, I let's believe he was strapped up heavily at the end of the Bradford game I actually saw an ambulance coming into the ground as I was leaving and there was murmurs that it was for Gellin but I don't think it was um, he's got hamstring injury he'll be out for the next few weeks I'm told hoping to be back for the cup semi-final against Lee but of course that obviously causes issues in terms of trying to offload Gellin which Witness have been trying to do not because he's a bad player or because he's not good for the club but just a pure financial decision um, the transfer window runs until 9th of August so you've still witness got about a month now to effectively move players on if they can um, you know there'll be clubs at the bottom end of Super League trying to strengthen to fight relegation um, so it'll be interesting to see what movement there there is some positive news so Patrick Arvan is training with the club and I believe he's going to sign on a four week unpaid contract or trial um, should be available Sunday against Rochdale which would be a 
a big boost, it has to be said, with us really being struggling with wingers. You know, Ryan Inter's injured, Owen Buckley's injured, Jaden Hatton's picked up an injury. I don't think Joe Edge is particularly ready to play um, in the first team, although he's done okay. In, in two, if you put Arvan on the wing, he certainly adds a little bit of, if nothing else, you know, a bit of experience. But, I mean... He's a, he's a body at the end of the day, and I think that's where um, Witness have been really struggling for numbers. If you can, you know, instead of chucking yet another kid onto the pitch, at least you've got someone there as a solid professional. Um, I think Arvan's never let Witness down. I don't think, you know, he's a long serving player who's at the club for seven or eight years. Um, you know, prolific, relatively prolific try scorer. Um, it would be good to have um, to have him, and you know, and and also if he does play. What a tremendous um, show of commitment to play for free. Um, doesn't have to. He's helped a massive help to the club when you consider the situation that the club finds itself in. Um, and I think if if it does if it does transpire that this is what's happening, I think um, Arvan certainly deserves some sort of uh, definitely a, a positive reception when he when he when if he does return. Um, a bit more about funding again. We still not again. The, the situation is you a massive hole in the budget in terms of the parachute payment and the academy funding being withheld. I mean, I think if you ignore the parachute payment, there's still from the academy money that was withheld a massive hole in the in the finances. I've seen a few people. Would it have been better if witness had just liquidated in February and then started again in in next season? Maybe um, I don't. I don't. I would never have gone for that option. But you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Um, I don't. Well, I, it's still a bit unclear. It's still a bit hazy about what's happening in terms of debts and, and and bits and bobs like that. My understanding is that the new club isn't responsible for the old club's debts, but to open up their supply chain, they're having to pay off some of the old club debts. So if you, you know, if you buy something from a supplier and the old club owes them money they're not going to deal with you until you've paid that off and as much as the new co- the new club the current owners is a new limited company it's still witness vikings witness vikings is still if you ring up and say it's joe blogs from witness vikings that company is not particularly fussed whether it was the old limited company or the new limited company they just think well witness vikings owed us money so um we're still not 100 sure what the liabilities are in terms of the debt you know we don't know how much money the club is having to pay out to, to cover the debt but the revelations regarding what the wage bill is I mean I, I would imagine that regardless of what the debts are I'd imagine that the wage bill for the club the club's revenue is getting nowhere near what that wage bill is um, it's disappointing of course that I've seen Luke Backhouse and Amaro and Kukas they obviously had conversations with the old custodians and, and walked away and you can sort of see why they were sort of their hands were tied or their lips were sealed because of a, an NDA and a number of people have got NDAs with the old club including Kevin Brown over his um, transfer fee um, which is apparently I heard on the grapevine uh, a lot more than what we thought it was Um you know, there's all sorts of little things. You know, I, th- I think Thomas Coyle had one when he got injured many years ago on the on the eye pitch. He wasn't allowed to talk about that. Um, there's you know surprising number of uh, of people kicking around with those. So, so yeah, not a, sorry. I'm I, I can't be more positive. Um, I just thought you know there's plenty to to chat about and and hopefully I've given some insight and some of my opinion into into those issues. Of course, Rochdale at home. This week, 3pm on Sunday, obviously, need to get as many fans in the ground as possible, paying the £20 to get in. Um, another, the next home game, I think, after that is Toronto on the 21st of July. The kickoff time has been moved to 5 past 5 because it's on Sky. So, um, I, don't, I don't really understand why Sky have only realised two weeks before that they need to have it kicking off later, but that's by the by. Um I think they've obviously had issues with some of the other games they've tried to move they've, three of the Toronto games actually aren't being televised now um, I think they're all home games because um, they can't move the kickoff time to suit Sky um, it's the way of the world I don't think moving to 5 o'clock I don't think it's 5 past 5 it's not a disaster um, it'd be nice it'd be nice summer's evening hopefully um, you know I'm not a great deal of expectation but it'd be fantastic if, if Widnes could put on a bit of a display 
at home um, in front of the Sky cameras and may of course um, help the club in a few areas it might put some players in the shop window it might of course bring some attention to the current plight of the club and maybe drum up a bit more support so uh, hopefully we'll see some action in that area very soon um, that's all from me thanks for thanks as always to the sponsors musical all sorts PD Law Solicitors Isle Ghost Financial Management and Deals of Jewelers um, please do like share comment if you want me to talk about anything else if you've got any ideas for guests if you want to come on as a guest and, and give me your views and thoughts on what's going on at the club um, please do um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon